Hello everyone and welcome, I'm Luca Borro and this is BioPrintUp. In this video we talk about 3D scaffolds for bioprinting and we will see how to draw the scaffold with parametric 3D CAD software. Now, let's see how we can draw 3D scaffold with CAD 3D softwares. What are the steps to do that and what are the software that can be used? We will use two software for this tutorial. The first software is Rhinoceros with free plugin Grasshopper. With Rhinoceros we are going to 3D draw the scaffold with a different type of parametric geometries. You can download it from the link that uh, I leave you in the description and uh, try it for 30 days trial period. The second software that we will use is Mesh Mixer, a completely free software. With Mesh Mixer we are going to optimize our scaffold and prepare it for 3D printing process. You can download it from Mesh Mixer official website uh, by searching in Google uh, or uh, download it from the link that I leave you in the description. Okay, now let's go. We open Rhinoceros and start to draw our 3D scaffold. Okay, now let's open Rhinoceros. We go to click on Tools, Option, and we select Units, and we select Millimeters with absolute tolerance of 0.001. Click OK, then we write Grasshopper on the top of the screen. OK, now we can create a new file of Grasshopper, clicking on New Document. But before we begin drawing the scaffold, we need to install two free Grasshopper components. The first component is called Intralatis, and we can download it for free on Google. So we go in Google homepage and type in uh, the search bar uh, Intralatis Grasshopper. Okay, this is Intralatis page on Food for Rhino portal. We click, we click on download and we select the version 0.7.6 beta and download it on our, uh, in our specific folder. What we have downloaded is a, is a GHA file. Uh, GHA file uh, is the component file for Grasshopper. Now we go uh, in, uh, into the directory. We, click, we right click on the file and the cell properties and we can check and sell the block in this window. Click OK. So we right click on Intralatis file and select copy. We go back on the Grasshopper skin Click on File, Special Folder and Component Folder. Now we pass the file into this folder. Now we need to install the second component uh, of Grasshopper. It's called the Dendro and now we, we go to search it on Google. So, uh, to install this component, we must uh, first download it from the official website. Uh, I leave you this link in the description. We can unzip the file. We need to copy them into um, Grasshopper component directory. So, we go to Dendro folder, click on libraries, and we can select all files and right click on them and select copy. In Grasshopper, we can click on file special folder, component folder, and paste it into the folder. Now we are really ready to start drawing our 3D scaffold with Rhinoceros and Grasshopper. Okay, now we are in the Rhinoceros and Grasshopper main windows. Uh, we click on Intralattice component. This is Intralattice component. 
we click on it and now let's choose the elementary cells that will compose our scaffold to do this we click on present cell and drag it to the grasshopper main window in the 3D window of the rhinoceros you can see the elementary cell that we have selected in grasshopper if we click on this arrow we can choose different types of elementary cells like as X cells, star cells, cross cells, tesseract cells, vintage cells, octlet and diamond and so on. Now we can choose the global shape of our scaffold. Do we want to produce a cubic or cylindrical scaffold or do we want to give our scaffold an spherical shape or any generic shape? Okay, we select the shape uh, we want to give to our scaffold, for example, basic box for the cubic shape. Okay, we click on basic box and drag it into the main screen. Grasshopper works through connection between the various components. Let's connect the two topo together, simply dragging it. Okay. You can see on 3D windows the entire cubic structure of our scaffold with a basic elementary cell composed by cell type on a comb 1. We can go back to grid cell type and now through these commands CSX, CSY, CSZ we can define the size of the elementary cell. Through NX, NY and Z, we can define how many times we want to repeat this cell in the three-dimensional space. To assign values to these items, we click twice on the main screen and write a number, in this case 0 0.4, the unit of measurement of these numbers are millimeters, so it is 0.4 millimeters. We repeat this operation for CSX, CSY and CSZ simply by copying and pasting the components three times. What we got is a cube filled with a series of elementary cells also shaped like a cube that has a side of 0.4 millimeters in length. But how many times do we want to repeat these cells in the three dimensions of space? We simply assign numeric values to NX and Y and then Z entries of the components. We click twice on the main screen and type a number for example 4 and then click enter. Then we can connect the slider to the NX item. We have just uh, determined that our scaffold will consist of four elementary cells along the X direction of the space, each with a length of 0.4 millimeters. Then we copy and pass the slider twice and connect them under NY and then Z. The advantage of this parametric process is that at any time we can modify our scaffold simply by moving this slider this way. To make our scaffold compatible with normal 3D printers we should increase the cell size at least 1 mm. Now let's assign a thickness to all the wireframe rules that make up our scaffold. To do this we click on Dendro Components then click on create settings voice drag it to the screen and set these specific values as you see them on the screen 0 0.1 for uh, voxel size 3 for bandwidth and 0 for iso value and 0 for adaptivity Then we click on Carve to Volume and drag it to the main window. Now we connect the wireframe structure under Curves and the Create Settings under Settings item and we set a radius for our rods such as 0.4 millimeters, for example. 
then we can freely decide the road radius of our scaffold by lowering it, for example, to 0.2 mm, thus obtaining a clean scaffold ready to be printed. Ok, now we just have to export our scaffold in STL format, that is the file format used by whole 3D printers on the market. Well, to do this we simply right-click on the last component created and click on Bake. Our 3D model scaffold is now transformed into a mesh. We select the new mesh, click on File, Export Selected and we choose the STL format. Let's give it a name and save it on our computer. I want to remind you that with this system you can edit your scaffold as many times as you want by simply moving the sliders and changing their values. Create multiple scaffolds with the same geometry or with different geometries with extreme simplicity. Once your project is finished, don't forget to save the rhinoceros file and save the grasshopper file because in the future you may need it again to create a new scaffold variants. Now let's open Mesh Mixer and import the STL file of the scaffold we just created. This is very important because Mesh Mixer helps us to fix any errors in the mesh of scaffold and to make sure that our 3D printer will print the object without any problems. Sometimes, as you see in this case, the scaffold appears completely black for a problem of the so-called normal mesh. Simply click Ctrl A to select the entire scaffold geometry, then click on Edit and flip Normals. Ok, here is the scaffold back to normal. Now let's click Edit, Make Solid and now we wait for Mesh Mixer to check and optimize the geometry. Then click Accept. Ok, well, now we can export our file in STL format ready to be 3D printed. Ok, now I am trying to 3D print this scaffold with very cheap, very small, but very promising 3D printer. In the meantime, I thank you for following me and I invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss any future updates. Thank you, see you soon. Bye!